the thing that I, you know, we talked about sort of love and hate are both, uh, both fine as long as you're in the middle, but I think this is also relevant. So with, the, with Facebook, there's a lot of these huge viral campaigns that people are doing where on um, relatively sort of crappy and simplistic copy, you can have huge you know, viral adoption and the decay is also quite quick. But the interesting thing that I think people don't often consider is that the cost of non-conversion is not zero. Uh, and to explain that a little bit more is, suppose you have a viral campaign where, you know, the, we talk about a viral coefficient greater than one being where it's self-propagating, and you may only have a small percentage of audience that's necessary to get that off the ground, right? So you might have a five to 10% of audience that, that adopts, and you get enough, you know, sort of invitation effect that that propagates. But I don't think the rest of the 90 to 95%, the cost of them not converting is not zero. So a lot of the measurements that I think people sort of look at and say, okay, overall, how many people are going to reach with this? If you're pissing off 50% of people compared to like the 5% of people that convert, I don't necessarily think that's always a good thing. Short-term monetarily, it may benefit, but long-term, you may be causing brain damage and you may burn out your, you know, your possibility of working with that audience. Sorry, it's like the, it, the new ads that, uh, that Apple just came out with. I, know I was sitting with uh, uh, Rob Scope this morning and we were talking about the new ad uh, that he had seen. And I hadn't seen it yet, but he was describing it to me, which is, you know, where it's at the top of the page and actually yeah, it acts just like the iPhone and people were talking about it. And one person just, you know, one person thought it was interesting and that person then passed it on and then everyone ended up going to the site just to see the ad. The ad is now on YouTube, it's got great grounds all around it, people love it. I mean, so that's, make, give people something interesting to talk about. Don't just try and give them the usual standard stock, IAB standard that everyone thinks is going to work. Because reality is this this thing, at least the way Robin described it, is it's like when you shake the iPhone, the whole page shakes. And it's just, it's a very, he's a, you know, I watched it 15 times. And so, I don't know, anyone who watches an ad 15 times. Yeah, actually, so for me, the ad was the Sony Bravia ad. And we checked out that when I first did Jose Gonzalez was the music that was like, like they dropped 250,000 Super Bowls in three different places in San Francisco. It was the most amazing commercial I've ever seen. Uh, and like, you know, for me, that was like super happy. Like watching it over and over and over again. I bought the music, I posted it on my blog, and did all sorts of stuff. It was just like, occasionally you get like these massive impacts. Um, and I, I want to talk about that in just a second. So um, audience, you can start like coming up with questions. We're gonna start taking questions in about three minutes. So uh, if you want to start moving to the mics. I'm going to ask each of the panelists to come up with their you know, nugget of wisdom, golden nuggets. And uh, we were talking about pissing it all away. Hopefully there's nuggets in that turf, but we'll try and uh, do our best. Uh, I am trying to retweet uh, interesting stuff on metrics you know, when the audience has a different opinion about the metrics. Um, so um, who wants to go first? Uh, Michael, do you have a golden nugget ready for it? Well, I just say, you know, I think focus groups and surveys have their place, but we do have to think critically because the, the, the space is changing. There's going to be new, new gold standards coming out every day. So you just kind of have to stay plugged in to as many different outlets and, and really keep listening to your consumers. You have to find, you know, your consumers are always moving. So you have to, you have to keep up with them. And, you know, if you have the money to do with it, you should go with a, a good service that will help shepherd you through that process. But if you can't, you know, there are, there are a number of great free tools out there to help you, help you stay on top of that. Uh, Dan? I would say, uh, given the number of hands that were actually put up on it, as far as who's using what and so forth, I, I just start using the free tools. Go out, set up your search words on, uh, on, on Google, on Google, uh, Google Alerts. Um, use some of the technology searches that are out there. Use some of that to get informed, at least to know where it's happening. And as you get to a place where you're overwhelmed by the amount of information that's coming to you, right, so you move from data just to insight, and kind of that first step along that path. And when you find I now need it to become relevant and timely. You're ultimately going to fail if you're trying to do it yourself, or you're going to hire a whole bunch of people, and that's going to be expensive. So stop by dipping your toe, and stop by using some of the um, tools that are out there that are free. And so, I, you know, like, like I said, my favorite ones are certainly uh, Google Alerts, um, utilizing that, um, and making sure that you know you can knit some pretty interesting things with that. It's really interesting. Um, so Dave Cherbuck, um, who's the head of social media at uh, Lenovo. Asked him this question, like knowing that I was going to be coming here, he he's like, I use all the tools that are out there that do tracking of posts. He's used all those guys. He's used Radiant Six. He's used he's used a whole bunch of them. And he's like, ultimately, I use a free tool today that we cobbled together ourselves, and it works, and it's good enough right now. But he recognizes that to go into languages, to go beyond the set of data he's looking at today, it's not going to work in the long term. And so that's you know, that, you'll get to that point. Um, yeah, my one is that. 
for nearly 30 years in marketing, and I long for a measure of word of mouth. I wish we had one. Guess what? You do now. You just have to be able to accept word of net as a proxy for word of mouth. We have to call it social media, so it confuses the hell out of everybody trying to understand it. It's really just word of net. And Jim, I guess one retweet was a question about asking about, do we capture the people who are not online and their sentiment whenever we're only using online tools for metrics and sentiment analysis? You have to go have some samples of non-online users and go check and see if they're talking about something different. Uh, you know, it, it amazes me. I, you know, I'm a subscriber on Big Research, and I think that the numbers that they publish every day are like 8,000 people. Okay. Well, you track, what, 120 million? 200. 200 million now, okay. And you guys track about the same. Well, okay. let's take what's word of net and assume it's the same unless somebody tells me that it's different. Let's see the things I see people talking about in the bowling alley or on a baseball game, the same thing they type on Twitter. So, sure, you can check it. Do bowlers Why use Twitter? Why not use it? It's the, it's the best proxy we've got. We didn't have any until now. Now you can. That's the new thing. Now you can track what people are talking about online. By all means, use it to drive your market. Um, and, uh, so so I'll, I'll try to wrap up. I know there's tons of questions here. That um, my, my one set of tips, I think, is I, I try to make a balance between social and search. So I, I still think one of the most underutilized tools for people is using search engine marketing to test concepts and then kind of moving that into organic search and trying to get that to happen. So I think for people who are not using uh, paid search as a way to test for keyword copy and interesting uh, things, also landing page tests, that's one area. And then on the social side, I'm you know, a huge Facebook addict, but I think uh, there's a whole range of tools now. Interestingly, I'm not sure that I have a great sense of how to measure the impact on Facebook uh, right now. And I, I think you know, they certainly make a big deal about that, but for me, that's, that's still a question. Um, last thing is I wrote a post uh, probably about a month ago, I was down talking at FOA in Miami about uh, uh, web to a pimping and easy. <laughs> and, and the concept that I think I wanted to kind of make sure people understood is this, in, in a lot of user-generated content systems where we're really talking about people contributing and then distributing, the person who's redistributing isn't necessarily the originator. And in many cases, they're not really motivated by uh, uh, cash. So I think that's understanding and trying to figure out who that uh, set of super fans are. You may want to ignore them some of the time if they're overemphasizing their their issues, but if you can convert them into people that are actually active parts of your campaigns, I, I find it's just like hugely valuable, these people who actively promote your brands uh, and products and services, and that most companies really don't take advantage of those people enough, to the point of really spending a lot of time in kind of getting to know those people, understanding what's going on, and building you know product advisory boards uh, from around that set of super fans, even if they're insane and sometimes, you know, you can learn a lot by working with those people. All right, so we've got 10 minutes. Let's uh, go to some questions and uh, get that out.